You know, every time I come back to the campus, I am so thrilled to be in this place, and I'm so excited and, and really energized uh, for a gospel ministry. But I'm going to tell you what, today was over the top for me. To be here for the first responder service this morning was, was just a, a joy and a delight. To hear such a clear gospel presentation and then see many souls that walk down the aisle to talk to somebody, to come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. Isn't that amazing? Praise the Lord that Jesus still saves. Tonight, as we begin, I want to start by con really congratulating all of the West Coast Baptist College uh, students. Um, I know that a lot of time and energy and sacrifice has gone into uh, this uh, school year. And uh, I know each year, every, uh, every semester, when you come back to campus, uh, this church is energized. And I was sitting there thinking uh, just a few moments ago how exciting it is to know that Hundreds of local churches and, and Christian camps and mission fields are going to be energized because all of the young people, all of the college students that are going to be going back to their local churches and taking what they've learned here in this place and investing in, in those ministries. And I really hope, I want to challenge you to, to, when you go back to whatever place God takes you this summer, that you would be an encouragement to that ministry. And uh, you would encourage your pastor, encourage those in ministry that you're serving alongside, being faithful in those places and taking uh, what you've learned here and serving the Lord in those places. But you know, I want to encourage you before you leave. I want, I want to encourage you to thank those here in this college that have invested in your life. That's truly what it is. They're, they're taking of their time and their resources and, and, and what God has given them to, to invest in you. I'm so grateful for the men and women throughout my life that have, have really poured into me to help me become uh, the, the, the person, the pastor, the, really the Christian uh, that I am tonight. So I hope that in these next couple days that you will uh, thank those that have invested in your life. I know this is a service of Lancaster Baptist Church, and so tonight I want to thank you as a church uh, to, to stop and think for just a moment the countless uh, pastors and missionaries, churches that have been started, souls that have been saved through gospel ministry because of the sacrifice of the people of this church. It is amazing to think about. As a pastor from uh, really across the country, I want to thank you for your faithfulness to this college. And your support to the leadership and, and, and their vision that they had for training laborers for the harvest. And, and I, as a pastor from afar, do not take that lightly. And I'm so grateful for the unique ministry that is Lancaster Baptist Church and West Coast Baptist College. If you would take your Bibles tonight to the book of Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. When I start, first started pastoring... Back in my 20s, I, I, mean, I remember it, uh, I was so excited about uh, being a pastor and, and, and being able to, to lead a church and a congregation. And, and I would spend so many hours studying my sermons and, and I would spend so many hours praying uh, that God would use this message and work in the lives of people. And, and I would preach and, and I would preach and, and I would preach and, 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 and nothing happened. And I remember it wasn't that long after I was there that I, I called my brother who was a pastor in Alabama and I said, Shane, you know, I, I'm doing everything that I can and, and I'm preaching and I'm preaching and I'm, I'm doing everything I can to help these, these people. And I don't listen to a word I'm saying. I'll never forget his words as it helped really shape my ministry philosophy going forward. He said, you're responsible to preach to pray for them, and to love the people God has placed in your ministry. When they don't listen, when it seems like they don't care, when they get themselves in trouble, your responsibility is to preach, pray for them, and love them. And tonight, as you get ready to graduate from this place and go on to the ministries that you are called to, you'll be ministering to people. And I want you to understand that people are not a means to an end or a tool for your use. People are your ministry. Sometimes we lose sight of this truth as we're trying to grow. And I hear buzzwords like we have to build our brand and we're trying to create some, something for ourselves in, in, in this world. Or we're trying to keep up with other churches and pastors. And, and sometimes we feel like the, the people get in the way. Tonight I want to challenge you as you 
go to the churches that you'll pastor and the youth groups that you'll oversee and the mission fields that God has called you to and into the classrooms in those Christian schools that you'll be serving. Make sure that you care for the people that God has placed in your ministry and has given you to serve. Look with me, if you would, in Colossians chapter 1 as we read, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. Let's pray together. Father, we are so grateful for West Coast Baptist College and Lancaster Baptist Church. And Lord, I'm so grateful for the many faithful servants that are around the world because of the labors and the sacrifice of this ministry. Thank you for the leadership that you've blessed it with and how they faithfully invest in the lives of those that you bring into this place. I pray that you'd continue to bless it until Jesus comes. May many labors go forth from this place. Father, tonight as we take these few moments to consider the people that you will give us to minister to, Lord, may we have a heart of love and care for these people. Lord, I pray that you'll work in our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In the book of Colossians, we learn that Paul had never visited this region and, and did not start this church. However, in Acts chapter 19 and verse 10, Paul, the Bible tells us that Paul was preaching at Ephesus that all of Asia came. Ephesus was a major city of that day, and people would travel all over the region to, to do business, and this was a, a place of, of culture. I believe it was at this time that Epaphras was in Ephesus and heard the Apostle Paul preach and maybe was even saved and had a desire to go back to his hometown and, and start a church there in, in Colossae. Now false teachers were coming in and trying to lead people astray, so Epaphras, their faithful minister, did what he thought was best. He went and he found the Apostle Paul. Paul, of course, was in house arrest there in Rome when he heard the news from Epaphras and as to what was happening. And under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he wrote the book of Colossians. Now this book, as you go through it, is filled with many tremendous, tr tremendous truths. Several themes can be found in this book. In chapter 1, we see uh, what is known as the primary theme of this book in verse 18, where we're told that Christ is to have preeminence. Can I say that again? That Christ is not to have prominence, but Christ is to have preeminence. He's to have first place in your life personally and in the ministry that God calls you to. Many make Christ a part of their life, but for the Christian, nothing is to be of higher importance than Christ himself in our life. Another theme we see in chapter 2 is the idea of being rooted and, and built up, grounded in Jesus Christ and growing into the, the believer that Christ wants us to be. Also in chapter 2, we see that in verse 10 that we are complete in him. All that we need to live the Christian life we have in Jesus Christ. Spiritual growth is seen throughout this book, and in, in chapter 3, we see this is done through the, the putting off and, and the putting on. I want to bring your attention to the emphasis on our walk or our conduct, our life here in this world. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 10, the Bible says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. We as believers are to walk worthy of and we are to be pleasing God with our life. If you jump over to chapter 2 in and, and verse number 6, the Bible says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. God is concerned how we conduct ourselves in this world and how, how we live and how we serve him. In, in chapter 3 in verse 7, it says, In the which ye also walked sometime 
when ye lived in them. There was a way that you walked before you were in Jesus Christ. Now there is a way that you are to walk that, now that you are in Jesus Christ. In chapter 4, in verse 5, the Bible says that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. In verse 4, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. I want you to understand tonight that God is concerned on how you behave yourself in this world and how you conduct yourself in your relationships and, and how you treat people here. There is a, a great deal in the, in the scriptures that tell us how we are to live our lives as those that, are, those that are in Jesus Christ. And these are all very important truths. But tonight, I want you to see from the very beginning of this letter that we see Paul and Epaphras... We're introduced to these men, and we see their care for the people in the church at Colossae and really in all of that, all of that region. And I want you to see this in, in three, three priorities. If you're going to care for the people that God places in your life, you're going to have to make it a priority. If you're, listen, if your priority is church growth, there's some people who are going to get in your way, and you're going to struggle with that. You're going to have a hard time with that because you, they, they, they seem to be obstacles. And instead of caring for them and them being the goal, they're, they're hindering your goal. Hey, listen, if you're, if you're worried about making a name for yourself, guess what? Some people are, are, are going to get in the way. We know the name of the Apostle Paul because of the ministry that he had and the books that he wrote and how God used him so faithfully. Tonight we learn in Colossians chapter 1 of Epaphras. Uh, uh, the Bible says he was a faithful minister, a faithful servant of the Lord. But in chapter 1, what you really see in, in, the, in the hearts and the lives of these two men are how they cared for these people. And if we're going to care for those that God has placed in our ministry, I want to share with you three priorities that we must have in our life. Number one, we must prioritize thankfulness. We must prioritize thankfulness. And we've already read verses 1 through 7 by way of introduction, but I want you to look back with me, if you would, in uh, verse number 2. He says, To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He's writing to these believers that are in the church. He says, We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, it's easy for us in our life to, to see the negative in everybody. Maybe you know somebody like that. Maybe that's your personality. You're, you're the pessimist. You're the one that always sees the negative in, in other people. I have some friends in my life that, that man, when they see other people, they never see their flaws. They only see what's positive uh, in their life. So many uh, in the world struggle uh, with this issue of seeing just the negative and missing the point. Epaphras comes to the Apostle Paul and he says, listen, there's these false teachers coming in and the people in our church, they're beginning to buy into it. But that's not all he said. Notice what he told the Apostle Paul about these individuals, which Paul is giving thanks. He said, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard, of, first of all, your faith in Christ Jesus. Paul is praying for them and thankful for the faith that they have in Christ. These are our brothers in, in Christ. Sometimes we get involved in ministry and, and we see the guy down the street and, and, and maybe their, their church is doing a little better than our church. And what do we want to do? We want to we criticize them. Wait a minute. If they're a believer in Christ and they're preaching the gospel and they're living for the Lord and they're serving God. Listen, these are brothers in Christ. But yet we're so busy looking at the, the negative things and trying to be nitpicky to their ministry. We're not serving the people God has given us. And then the people in our church that we're supposed to be serving who, who frustrate us and we struggle with. And, and, and we're, we're constantly looking for the negative aspects. And, and Paul says, listen, I know you have some things going on there in the church, but I'm so grateful that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. You know, sometimes we forget that we're the family of God. And we're the part of the body of Christ. And these people have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so Paul was not focused necessarily on the negative aspects, but he was praising God that they had trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. He goes on to say that I'm thankful that you have love for the brethren. Paul said that I'm so grateful that you, the testimony that has been brought to me is that you love one another. 
as, body, as the body of Christ, and we serve on a regular basis, and, and um, you know, we're faithful to the, the local church. Sometimes we get familiar with each other. Sometimes we get to know each other a little too well, and we, we see the flaws in each other. I love Pastor Chapel this morning to emphasize, we are all sinners. We are all sinners. And he said the, the law enforcement, but the, the Baptist preachers. We're, we're all sinners, and we all have flaws. And, and it's amazing to me how easy that is for us to say, but yet how difficult it is for us to truly understand that. When we say, oh yeah, well, I know I'm a sinner. Can I ask you, when's the last time you confessed your sin before God? Right? So it's easy for us to say it, but actually dealing with it on a regular basis. But we say that about other people. While we know they're a sinner, and what we want to do is we want to hold their sin against them. But really, their sin has been forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we should see the, the, the faithfulness. We have some folks in our church that, that, that serve God in just the, the unique ways. And I'm going to be honest with you. Personally, they can get on my nerves. Right? And I know personally, I probably can get on their nerves. Not, my personality doesn't click with everybody's personality. I've, under, I, I've learned that a long time ago. But man, I watch them. I mean, they just serve the Lord. They're there to greet. They're there to, to, to give a smile. They're there to, to help on a work day. They're, they're just there. Why? Because they love the brethren. And that's what was going on there in the church at Colossae. They were serving and doing life together. They loved one, each, one, one another. And so Paul understood that and he gave thanks. He also was thankful for their focus on the hope that was laid up for them in heaven. You know, Paul understood that these people are going to spend eternity with me, and I'm excited about that. And I'm thankful because of Jesus Christ and who you are in Christ, I know that my home is in heaven and that your home is in heaven. And then he also gave thanks for the fruit that they see in their lives. And so Epaphras came, and he didn't just say, hey, listen, I want you to understand, Paul, these people are being pulled away by these false teachers. He said, I also want you to know what they're doing for the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and, and how people are being saved, and all the work of God that is being done in our local church. And so when you go somewhere, and you get involved in ministry, I promise you this, there's going to be bigger churches. There, there, there's going to be ministries that seem like they're, they're doing more and have more, and, 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 and sometimes we can get discouraged. We start questioning, why? Why isn't this? And it's easy to blame the people in our church. But I learned a long time ago, it's not about the size of my building or, or the amount of my budget, but it's about the people. And I learned on a daily basis, to give thanks. I, I give thanks for the people that serve alongside of me on my staff. I, I give thanks for the people that, that serve alongside of us in our ministry that, that I kind of click with. We, we like the same things, and, and we get along, and we, we want to we eat at the same restaurants, and we involved in the same sports, and, and the same area of life. And, and I'm thankful for the people that are different than me. Uh, we were talking a little earlier about music. I'm not a music person at all. Nobody's ever invited me to sing in a choir or a group or anything like that. And, um, and you know what? Music people, sometimes I think they're weird. I mean, they're just different. <laughs> and they're different. But man, what, how different my church would be if it wasn't for those music people. And I give God thanks every day for their faithfulness Amen. to use the talent that God has given them for his glory and his honor. We need to be prioritize the idea of thanksgiving instead of seeing all the, the negative aspects and, and the frustrations and trials. Somebody will come into my office and they'll want to they have a counseling session and I'll sit down and talk with them and, and I'll be like, wait a minute, we just dealt with this six months ago. Why, why are we dealing with the same, why are we dealing with the same issue? And that's not my response. It's like, okay, I'm here to help you and how can I invest in you and help you in this area of your life. I, I, listen, I'm thankful that God has brought you to our local church. And so I want to encourage you as you go off into ministry, prioritize thankfulness for the people that God has placed in your life. Number two, prioritize spiritual growth. Prioritize spiritual growth. You know, it's, it's easy to, to prioritize the, the schedule and the next big event and, and the ministry and the, and the programs and, and all of those things because that's what we believe people want. But can I tell you tonight what people need is spiritual growth. 
And that was a priority in the life of the, in the ministry of the Apostle Paul. If you look down with me in, in verse number 9, he says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. Notice here that the word desire. Paul had a desire that these individuals would grow. This was a priority in his life, in his prayer life, and his ministry. He prayed that they, they would know, they would have spiritual, uh, or excuse me, he prayed for their, their spiritual life there in verse number 9, that they might be filled with the knowledge of his will. He prayed that for them to have knowledge, to know what God wants for them uh, in their life. Oftentimes in ministry, we want people just to do what we want them to do. We want people to do what the ministry that we've asked them to do and expect them to do. And, and when they're not in their place and doing what they're supposed to do and our schedule gets off and things don't go the way that we want. And listen, I'm all for doing things decently and in order and on time and, and have everything nice. I'm all for those things. And sometimes even with my own staff, I can get a little overboard with those things. And I have to be reminded that these people and their spiritual growth and their walk with the Lord is more of a priority than any program that we offer in our church. People are the priority. And so we need to prioritize their, their spiritual growth. He prayed for them to be filled with knowledge and all wisdom, the skill uh, to use what, what we know is God's will and, and the word of God and to uh, walk in, excuse me, and in spiritual understanding and we need to help people understand why. Why we do the things that we do and, and understand the, the word of God. He's praying for their, their spiritual life and he prays um, for them to walk worthy of the Lord. And, and he prays for their relationship with Christ over and over here again. That they would be fruit, fruitful. And then in verse number 10, that they would be increasing in the knowledge of God. When I first went to Grace, where I pastor... I would, after the service, I would, I would go out into the lobby and, and I would greet people like, I think you do the same thing like most pastors do. And, and I would say, listen, if you're here today, you know, and you're visiting, please come by. We have a gift for you. I'd love to meet you personally. And, and I would walk out into the lobby and, and one of our uh, ushers would, would come over to me and he'd say, pastor, we had 205 people today in church. And I was like, okay, praise the Lord. And, um, and so then, um, Next week go by and I'd do the same thing and he'd come by and, and uh, I'm gonna make make myself look good. So Pastor, we had 225 people in church here this week. We didn't go the other way. And um, next week, third week come by, Pastor, we had you know 230 people in the church today. And I looked at him and was like, I was like, you know, Brian, why do you come and tell me? Why do you come and tell me that? And um, and he's like, well, isn't that what's important? And it's so easy to lose sight. And I said, listen, I'll be able to find out on Monday. I'll be able to find out later in the week how many people were, were in the service. You write it down and you put it in your little book and, and, and I'll be able to, you know, find that out. But to him, that was a, a priority in ministry. As a pastor, if we have a thousand people show up in our church and nobody learns of Christ, Nobody grows in their spiritual life. I failed. The priority isn't how many showed up. The priority is spiritual growth. And that's what the Apostle Paul prayed for. He prayed that they would have spiritual understanding, that they would grow, and, and that they would be fruitful for the Lord Jesus Christ, and that they would, that they would serve God. And I know that's the, the prayer of those in this ministry, that, that college students would come here and, and they would grow with the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and they would be conformed to his image and then they would go out and they would be fruitful for the Lord Jesus Christ. I, you know, I, I understand numbers are important. I, you know, I joke with our church and tell them all the time, um, it's not all about numbers, but it's all about the numbers. Because the more people there are here, the more people that I get to serve. And the more people that we get to serve with. But it's not about, the focus isn't the, the physical growth as much as it is the spiritual growth. 
I can't imagine standing before God one day and giving an account for myself and, and for our, our local church. And, and I was like, hey, pay, praise the Lord. You know, we went from 200 to 1,000. And to find out that, yeah, but nobody grew. You, you, you get what you focus on. You get what you make a priority in your life. We hear all the time that many churches don't focus on discipleship. And people aren't being discipled in their churches. And, and that's a sad testimony for any church. Because you get what you prioritize. And the Apostle Paul made a priority of their spiritual life. He says, I'm praying for your spiritual walk with the Lord. Because that's a priority. That showed his care for them. And then number three, and finally tonight. Not only do we need to prioritize our thankfulness for the ministry and for the people that God allows us to serve and serve with, not only do we need to prioritize spiritual growth, but most importantly, and, and please don't, don't forget this, wherever God takes you, we need to prioritize the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that sounds like, well, of course. Of course he's the priority, but listen, there's many quote-unquote ministries. There's many quote-unquote churches out there that Jesus isn't the priority. Many people attend a church. Jesus isn't the priority. And if you as the leader in that ministry and you as a servant of God don't make it a priority in the church and in your home, guess what? Those that are under you, those that are serving with you, they're not going to make it a priority. Notice with me as you go through just, just, just chapter 1. Look with me in verses 1 through 4. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the brethren. Look at verse number 5. Verse number five, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. We're reminded of the gospel. The gospel of who? The gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the good news. Verse number seven, he says that as ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of, of Christ. Paul was a, a servant of Christ. Epaphras was a servant of, of Christ. They wanted those in their ministry to serve Christ. Look at verse number 13 then. Speaking of Christ, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things which were created by him and for him. And he, speaking of Christ, is before all things, and by him all things consist. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he, speaking of Christ, might have the preeminence. You see, for the Apostle Paul, his priority everywhere he went, every day of his ministry, was Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That people would know him and the power of the resurrection. That they would know Jesus Christ. And, and I understand, listen, it can become very easy to get wrapped up in buildings and programs and finances. And all of these are good and they're necessary. But remember that pointing people to Jesus Christ is the priority of our ministry. Jesus must be the priority. What was going on here in Colossae is the false teachers were coming in and they were saying, okay, it's, it's okay to have Jesus, but you have to come under the law. The Judaizers were coming in. There were those that were uh, bringing in mysticism and the worship of angels. And they said, okay, it's okay to have Jesus, but, but you have to have this and worship angels in this mysticism. There were those that were bringing in the Greek philosophy. It's okay to have Jesus, but, but, but you need to have this philosophy and this mindset and, and this lifestyle. If you say Jesus, but, Jesus isn't the priority. It's Jesus and, and, and Jesus alone. And tonight, as you're getting ready to graduate and, and leave this place, 
And you're going to go to the, the ends of the world, wherever God takes you. There's going to be people. There, there's going to be people. And I pray that your concern would be not for the bigger buildings, the bigger bank accounts, to be better than the church down the road, to have your name in light and get, receive the glory of men, but that your concern would be for the people. To do that, you must prioritize thanksgiving. You must be thankful for the people that God has placed you. Maybe it's going to be in a place of five. Maybe it'll be in a place of 5,000. Whatever God gives you, whoever God brings to your ministry, be thankful for them. Prioritize their spiritual growth. Not, not your blessings and, and what you desire, but their spiritual growth. It's going to be hard work, but it must be a priority. And most of all, may Jesus be the priority of your ministry. Father, thank you for this wonderful ministry here in Lancaster, California. And I thank you for these wonderful folks in this church that have sacrificed so that the gospel would go forth and laborers would be sent to the harvest. And Lord, I thank you for these students and those that will be graduating tomorrow. And what an exciting time it is. And Lord, I'm so thrilled and look forward to hearing the reports of the, the ministries that you take them to and, and Lord, the lives in, that are changed because of their faithfulness and their service where you take them. And Father, I pray that wherever they go, that their life would be filled by the care that they have for the people that you place in their ministry.